so there's this whole thing, you know, the whole Kevin Samuels thing about women, black women being overweight and and mm -hmm. and that. How do you? How does that? How does that? Um, impact you or how what's your feeling on that I, I, it's so hard when you've been overweight your whole life i was a fat kid so yeah i've been hearing this shit. I'm, I'm 32 so I'm, I'm over here like all right you know <laughs> like right right somebody I, like it <laughs> some, yeah i have reached that somebody like it point um only time like i'm back in the gym now but that's because my knees and my hips ain't as lubricant as they used to be and i want to mm. be able to still you know bounce on it mm. you know what i mean like I'm, I'm in the gym for different reasons and See, you know, Tata, Tata knows how to get those followers. Gotta, she wanna know how to bounce. That's all she has to say is I bounce on it and that, that was, hashtag bounce on it. Yo, 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 what up, y'all? On this episode, we have comedian Tata Sharice. She's here as we discuss dating outside your race, Kevin Samuels and obese women, having 20 siblings and bailing out your man out of jail. Loyalty at its best. Oh, this is a real good one. Um, yeah, it's wild and interesting, man. And uh, we also keep doing the uh, bonus show if you with Tata. If you want to listen to the bonus show, go over to patreon.com slash manschool202. That's where we do all the bonus content, and it helps keep the show going. Uh, this week, we continue our conversation with Tata Sharice uh, as we discuss sharing a man, the need for therapy, and how close things are to the end of a relationship that you may not know about. Uh, and just support us. We really appreciate it. Uh, also, if you want to support us, uh, I do relationship consultations. You could email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. And uh, Dante, if they want to reach you. DanteNero.com. Click on consult. You can have direct time with me. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, this is a special show because we got a special guest on the, in the building, um, and I want to just say I might have said that 500 times before, but this time I mean it. Um, first and foremost, Harry, what's popping, baby? You ready to rock and roll? I'm absolutely ready to rock and roll. I'm always ready to rock and roll. Always ready to help people out. Always ready to give advice. Always ready to lead my best life. Although I'm having a tough time keeping these alligators down. I get it. I get it. Um, I want to introduce our guest here. A uh, very funny chick I met a few years ago. New in the game, tearing it up. Uh, give it up for Tata, yo. Give it up for Tata. What up, baby? Hey, what's up, y'all? How you guys doing? I'm going. How, how you been? Working. Yeah, I'm working a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, where well, you been yeah, working dude. mostly? Um, I'm. You know, I'm in Philly. I'm a Philly-based comic, so uh -huh. I've been tearing it up down here. And I had started producing shows about a year ago, which is a whole different ball game. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you do, you, do, you, do you find that that it hurts your comedy to produce shows? Um, I say I'll say it takes away from the opportunity to think about writing as much, yeah. you know, yeah. Um, yeah. but I do enjoy giving uh, our local comics another platform or another room, mm -hmm. you know, especially because uh, we're not like New York or some of the other major cities that has a room every single night. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's kind of cool to give them an opportunity to come and work out and stuff like that. And to book, you know, out of towners and and have them come in, uh, especially if they've never been to Philly. I think you know it's cool. Being What's your regular show? Wait, what do you? And my regular show is actually just a monthly. It's the second Tuesday of every month. Okay. And I do a seasonal show at Punchline, so I use an independent space and I also use the club. Okay, cool, cool. So, it's, just, it's a weird thing because I find you know, especially with young comics. I mean, I, I get that you got to do what you got to do to create the spaces for you to work in. Um, but a lot of comics will will produce and they don't really understand. I mean, that was a rhetoric question when I asked you, how's it hurt you? Does it hurt your 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 comedy? Because I already know the answer. You know, there's a difference in building a race car and driving one. I mean, they seem really relevant, but it's not the same thing. And one takes away from the other because time is the commodity, you know, and. Right. When you use time for something else, it takes away from time because we don't have, we have time is is finite. So, it's I mean it's dope that you're trying to you know help the community and stuff, um, and help you know the comedy community and stuff. Do they? Do you think they appreciate it? Yeah, I mean I'm kind of like Queen B down here. Yeah. 
which is cool. But does, um, does two to- Ray know about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. Does two yeah. Ray know that you calling yourself Queen B? Because you know you got to go. You got to go through two Ray first. That's the that <laughs> that's the king of Philly right there. So is he still down in Philly, two Ray? Uh, yeah, he um he does a uh, soul comedy. It was at Warm Daddy's, but I think he uses another uh restaurant over in Jersey. Yeah, that's my man. That's my man. He, he, I, he I, booked I, me quite a few times, and I uh, took his uh, comedy class. He had yeah, a, like, they have he a knows his shit. Yeah, so he, I did he, that. He used to he used to text me every time he was going out on the road because uh, we 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 co headlined someplace, and um, I was you know you'd be in the hotel room in the, in the strip mall, mm-hmm. and he would be like, "Yo, you hungry?" I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "Where you going?" And he go, you know, I'm I'm go to this Blimpies and get a sandwich, and I'll be like, yeah, I'm not doing that. And he's like, why? I was like, because you got to take care of yourself. You got to treat yourself. He said, where you want to go? I said, we going to the Four Seasons, right? So we we laid out hors d'oeuvres, drinks, bottles of champagne, the whole lobster tail. He was like, man, I kind of like this. So it's funny because even though Toure is, we're about the same age, but he's, you know. He's an older head in comedy, and he was like, mm-hmm. he's like, man, I remember he always used to tell everybody that you know I hung out with Dante, and Dante was like, he takes, he treats himself well, right? So every time he would go on the road and get a great and go to a nice restaurant, whatever town he was in, he would take a picture of it and send it to me <laughs> as a as a shout out. So that's my man, but um, yeah, it's it's it's, it's dope. Um, you were you doing uh? mainstream stuff or are you doing both or i'm you both doing... i'm in urban and mainstream i'm in both sides yeah both the folks yeah how's it how's it how is that difficult in terms of what you do um when i say i don't i don't look at it as difficult i'm just an audience reader mm. you know i'm an audience reader and i don't have to switch much yeah to be honest i get to be myself um actually you were somebody who told me a couple years not to change up yeah in front of people, you were one of the people who was like, mm, "You shouldn't have to switch it, change up yourself." Yeah, you're so, also not going to get the same response. I mean, right. but it it allows you to work on both sides. Um, yeah. You know, you gotta. Un, I, 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 it's a weird thing, and I'm gonna tie this into the whole relationship thing. But um, what's interesting is about being. Um, so you you get guys who will rip the the black side, you know, Chitlin Circus side of comedy, right? Mm-hmm. But then when they go, the guys who rip on the Chitlin Circus go to the mainstream side, and a lot of times they don't do well, or they're real mediocre. Do you find that to be the case? And and vice versa. Yeah, with me, mine is, a, mine is the opposite a little bit. I rip mainstream. I'm excellent over there. I'm, I'm, I'm over there. Right. Um, now, Urban Rooms, I gotta, I gotta pull out my shit out the bag. I gotta um, work a little harder. I'll rip it, but I'll be tired when I'm done. Yeah, you know, well, I'll be tired when I'm done. I, I end up doing my jokes that got the music with them, with it. You know, like I. How's that? You don't up, feel, you I'm don't feel dirty. I'm at the cookout. You don't feel dirty. Do I feel it sounds dirty like she though? feels dirty. The way you yeah, describe that like music, I had to dust off that sh- the music. She that <laughs> horse shit I do for I gotta, my people. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta go a little, you know. I mean, well, and, and it's not just in re- correlation with the uh, this the 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 naughty jokes. It's also just touching home on topics that that community can relate to. Well, you know, what? It's, it's funny because I find this, um, and and this goes to how racially charged America is in general. Black people act different when they're amongst themselves. There's always this code than than they do when you have black people who work in a mainstream room, right? Yeah. Um, and I always say it's because black people black people don't get sarcasm. It's not that they don't get sarcasm, but sarcasm. So if somebody sarcasm, the definitions of sarcasm is saying something when you don't mean it, saying something without saying it, right? So it's a clever way of saying it, right? And if you from the if you from the hood, and somebody says something that has an innuendo to it, you like nigga, what you right. fuck you saying? <laughs> so it's it's a it's offensive, 
because you're being deceptive. That you're it's read as being deceptive. Mm -hmm. And so not being uh, up front is almost like what the fuck you talking about? You know, right. that's how we take it. So we take it offensively, which is culturally different. Um, which is interesting because you, you'll see a white comic will come in and just do their jokes in a black room and they will instantly give them the leeway to not be black, mm. you know? Um, whereas you got to be black enough. Like you're always in our own communities. And what's funny about that is it's no different in any ethnic room. If you're Puerto Rican, you're Spanish or Latino and you want to let, you got to be Latino enough. If you're Russian, if it's all Russian, you got to be Russian enough. If you're black. Anytime you have a monolithically ethnic crew, uh, what I think we, 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 it's almost like you have to prove. Divisions form. Divisions yeah. form and people feel comfortable with their own because usually that division implies something else, meaning like a, a, a wealth status or something that takes well, you away from that community. Well, it's not wealth status. It's like you're a double agent. Mm -hmm. Like if you come in. I am, I am a double agent. Yeah, you gotta. It's like they they take if you're not speaking their language, like yo, who the fuck you think you are? Which I uh, which I think goes a lot to the trauma. Um, which is I, I say too. Sorry, to cut you off. No, no. I um, I'm a double agent. I won't say by accident, but be due to life. Prior to comedy, I got to experience different worlds. You know. Oh, you talking um, about code switching? Uh, not even, uh, not just code switching. I went. I'm I'm from Camden, New Jersey, which is definitely the hood. Mm -hmm. Daddy was a kingpin drug dealer. Mom is currently still crackhead 20 plus years later. Mm -hmm. I raised myself from 14 on up, but I'm also first generation college student and went to a predominantly white institution. <laughs> I went right. to a predominantly white college and stayed all four years on that campus. So I got to see some shit. I got to live amongst the whites. Yeah, I was but in that, there but like, oh shit, that what is, are you doing? That you is know? code switching. That's, and then that's I worked what... in corporate America right after that for a couple years before comedy. Right, right. So um, I always had a, a, a decent vernacular about my tone and all that because my mom made me talk proper growing up. Her saying was, just because you're from the hood don't mean you ain't going to act like it. Like She used to say that. she oh, I had to say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Like My household was a little different before she got on that shit. Mm -hmm. you know, she was a good mom. You know? she, just, yeah. she just didn't, she wanted different for her children. Um, so I had to talk proper and, and everything. So I always spoke well even before I went away to school. Like they used to call me the white girl in the hood, which was weird as shit. I'm like, what y'all, <laughs> you know? Because yeah. I'm speaking proper, you know. Yeah, you can't um, be a white, you can't be a white white girl with them big ass titties. There's no I way. Know. You can and, then, and then my sassy, it comes, it comes out, it comes yeah. out, whatever. It's um, it's it's a funny thing because I'm going through a dilemma. Not really a dilemma. I've made a decision about this, and mm -hmm. um, what's interesting about this is, is this whole thing about talking proper, right? So. So I've been bouncing this around in my head and I go, what is proper? What, what we mean by proper is you mean white and you talk white. We make talk white so that you can make white people feel comfortable. But I think that as a lexicon of what we what has happened with language, I think we've gotten to a point where I don't really give a fuck if I speak white or not. Like I'm going to speak the way I want to speak mm -hmm. um, because I find that n no nobody is. Black folks have not gotten sh uh, shot any less because they spoke, because they said yes, officer, no. They still put your face in the concrete and put the chokehold on and everything. And so I'm really at a point right now where I don't, I don't want to hear it. I don't give a fuck what you think. Here's what I'm going to do. If I'm going to get that ass beat, if I'm going to die, whatever it is, then we're going to sue you and somebody's going to get rich off because... You know, I, it's funny. I was looking at um, this is an interesting little concept. But I mean, it's a little off the off the beaten path. But when you look up the word language, right? Yeah. Hold on, let me just bring it up real quick. Um, uh, language. This is the uh, principal uh, method of human communication consisted of words used in structured and conventional ways sounds and speech and writing and gesture right mm -hmm. so if i go i always i have this joke where i do if i'm in, if you working at the counter in mcdonald's and i walk in and i go hey yo right right you know what that means i know what that means right right yeah. so 
So language is our ability to communicate and that you can receive and understand what that communication is. So you know what that means. Well, just say what that means so the listeners know what I'm told. The white boys will listen. Hey, yo, me, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hello. Hey, Hello. Hi. Hey, yo, you going, can you hook me up? What's no, up? Is he, what's is up? It, I get some free. So what's yeah. what's interesting is that that is the definition of, of language. Of that the fact that I say words, sounds, and gestures, and you understand it. And so what's, what's happening is we've gotten into the sense in this country that the only thing that's acceptable is this, this proper speak, which is not proper speak, it's just white speak. Mm-hmm. And we have to kind of code switch and learn how to navigate. It's a dialect because dialects have existed in various portions of this country and around the world for a long time. Well, the news, when you when you read for the news, right, that proper speak is uh, is consider, it's called the New England dialect. It's, it's a dialect of white folks. So nobody speaks the same way the founding fathers, you know, wrote the Constitution. Mm-hmm. The lexicon of language has always changed. And so I don't I don't I don't correct people on their speech anymore. You know, I, I just understand that I don't have I mean, which is very rare that I can't understand what somebody's saying. And if I don't, if I give a, a, an inkling that I don't understand, then the person re-ups so I could understand what they're saying in context and gesture and so on and so forth. And I really think it's time ty- it's time for us to to stop genuflecting as well as people of color genuflecting to this this norm that and these are the these are the enslavers. Like yeah. I'm not, I don't give a fuck what you think no more. I don't care that you don't think that you know I speak the truth with with an F on the end. You know I might ask you questions. I don't give a fuck what you. You know what the fuck I said. So stop trying to make this as if your your understanding of things is different than mine. It's like mm-hmm. I, you know, like I'm well, looking at your then. hair. Your hair looks pretty. Uh, but thank you, you know, man. I appreciate that. I work hard. Yours as well, Harry. Oh, so um, sorry. Sorry, I thought you were talking to me. I, it gets a little sister. tricky for me, Harry. And I, Dante, Dante, it gets a little, not the hair. No, it gets a little tricky for me because this is how I actually speak. And I had to learn how to maintain the fact that I do speak this way, even around my black folks, to the point where they like, where are you from? And I'm like, Camden. They like, you don't sound like it. I'm like, well, that's where I'm from. I but see do more you, shit do than you, you. Do you stay? Do you stay true to that? Do I stay true to uh, who or I am? Or do you change it up? Or do you change it on stage? Change it on stage? I, I yeah. go back and forth. It, it depends on my story. I'm a storyteller. And I'm right. an actress, too. So when I'm up there, I think I'm because comf- I come from a theater background before mm-hmm. comedy. So a lot of that shows in the way I perform. You know, you've seen me before. I, I, I guess what I'm saying, when you speak, do you speak in your in your... When you're speaking, even as a narrative, I'm not saying when you're doing characters... Okay. I'm saying when you speak, do you find this is because I'm 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 this is a big thing for me now. Like it's really okay. a, a, yeah. a a distinction I'm making for myself because of the fact that the like so what I was gonna say is you know my sister was um she's always worked corporate America right mm-hmm. and part of her working in corporate America was her having to have a perm like you could not wear your wow. hair natural. Right. So wearing your hair, even in braids or natural or locks, was revolutionary at the time. We're talking about in the 90s. And now we're at a situation where where as a black woman, you can wear your hair natural. Right. And they don't. And not only that, I mean, I I think they're going to have their prejudices anyway. But I, I but I find it, you know, I'm a big I'm a big dude, big black dude. Right. Nobody doesn't have the prejudice against me anyway. It doesn't matter if I if I speak proper or whatever. This they they still have the same people who are racist are not going to learn from from experience. I'm just going to be the exception to the rule, right? And I think what happens is a lot of times in black audience, black comics pander to the audience because there's a sense of. I shouldn't be too intelligent. I shouldn't be this. And I go, and I think when we start taking that back and start really making it, owning that and saying, this is how I talk and I'm black as you and I can still get knocked upside the head with the cops, whether I speak proper or not. So I don't know what you, you you clown ass motherfuckers that I got to prove to you 
that I'm black enough when I'm living the same experience. Nothing is different for me because it is because it is I, nothing is different for me. So the fact that I have to go in and, and this is one of the reasons why I don't do a lot of black rooms. Cause I don't want to. Now you're now you're making me think like, damn, I do get a little bit more niggerish when I get in front of. Oh them. yeah, of course you do. I mean, well, it, it has to. You know, I mean, it's now the, you got me thinking like, damn, well, it's cold switching. Out. It's cold yeah, switching. Do come out and listen, a little bit more. You know? I I can't add anything to this uh, other than that I'm not white. I just want to point that out. She is uh, to that. let people know I that I. Your last name. I was like, mm, I'm well, there's half Armenian, half Ecuadorian. Okay, so, I knew it was some shit. I knew it. Uh, no, some shit. That's what came back on my DNA test. It said ninety eight percent some shit. <laughs> Tata, how does how does that impact your dating life at all? You know, this uh, having to be in both worlds at times, or or code switching to a degrees. How does that impact sort of how you your personal life and dating? Um, I'll say that I am. I'll say over the past year or so, I'm been attracting more white men. Um, um, I attract men of all races, to be honest, because I think because my titties are really big. So I think that has a lot, you know, like it's something that'll do it. That'll bring in a lot. That'll bring in a lot of customers. All that. So it's like I do attract all right. They're they smiling at the gas station, honey. I got the Indians. I got all of them. Mm-hmm. Next day they day, like, yeah, yeah, thank you. You know, it's all types of shit going on. But white men, it's been it's been different as far as white men have been. Uh, more bold as far as uh. Off why do you think they've been more bold, or why do you think it's uh a, it as of late? The niggas was taking their bitches. I'm like, oh, maybe they trying to, you know. Like, but so you're saying I, it's it's relationship inflation. That's what you're talking about. I, that, for 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 a moment, that's what I thought it was. But um, I, I, it might be may, possibly because I'm I'm doing more mainstream rooms. Uh, maybe the way I talk, or maybe oops. Maybe doing more mainstream it, rooms. It is you, becoming more yeah. of a thing for white men to approach. You're saying by, just by proximity that you're coming Yeah, up. just doing more rooms where you encounter more white people. Yeah. Statistically, the number goes up. Statistically, the number is going yeah. up. Exactly. Have you, have you, do you partake? You give a white boy a, you give a, white yeah. boy a taste when you give a white boy I a I haven't boy? yet. I haven't yet, but I've been thinking about it. Uh-huh. I haven't yet, though. I have not yet. I have not yet. Let me ask you this: it, Do you does it? I mean, if you? I deal with a white boy, you gotta have certain. This got to be a little soul. It gotta, it gotta be like a one. You of can't them. be a white boy, white boy. You gotta be yeah, like Tommy on, soul. like Tommy on power. Like Tommy, <laughs> like Tommy on power, or just under like. What about a Macklemore? Would a they, Macklemore? Would, would you go with Macklemore? I just like saying nah, Macklemore. That's a look. It took her too long to fucking. Yeah. When I said Tommy from Power, she was like, I, "Yeah, I can do that." <laughs> what about Mark Ronson when he was with Bruno Mars in that video, in uh, Uptown Funk? No, Is that, no, no. Nah. We're trying to figure it out, Tata. I know. I'm trying to figure it out myself. I never dated a white man, so it's it's a new thing to me. And I be talking what about to Steve Kerr about this actually. Is Steve Kerr like, "No, you got to try it, girl. It's all right over here." I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> Y'all sure? Because I mean, I I always think we're gonna bump heads at some point about something racial. Of course you are. And I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna handle that yet. Well, I'm gonna tell you, it's like I have a lot of a lot of white comics that I grew up that I in this business that I barely talk to now because of the fact that I'm because I'm just in a position where I will not I'm not gonna tolerate it. Like I'm not gonna you you, you misstep. I'm checking you. You're going to hear from me right away. And so if you, you know, usually if, and and they're so oblivious in terms of navigating race because they don't have to, that I, I, the minute you overstep, I'm checking you and I'm checking you every time you say something. So a lot of times they'll go, you know, I, I don't need this. I just want to be, let me just stay in my white world and I'll do what I want. And I'm fine with that. And so a lot of dudes very the intellectually intellectually they have the have to have the acuity to kind of deal with me because I'm just I'm not letting any I'm not letting nothing go nothing because the minute I'm offensive in something that offends them they're gonna let me know so I, I think and if that's what the case is is not fair do you think that um you are familiar with the whole mammy syndrome do you, you like the the, That's another thing. I feel like I'm cuddly and like I remind them. I had it a, does. I, was, I was on a podcast and it was a white boy podcast and their fan base. They're all crazy. white boy podcasts. Yeah. yeah right. And their <laughs> fan base was heavily white boys. And it was one of their like it was one of their great episodes, like one of their greatest episodes. I had a good time on there. Um, 
one of the comments someone said this stood out to me and because I, I i had said something i hate the way white men talk about their dick you know they say shit like i make do you know i say oh you need to talk about that shit like you you know what you're working with <clears throat> and then i started i was like i need you to say i love my dick you know and i had did this whole little thing and was <clears throat> hyping them up and they had a live stream going and one of the comments was like i haven't felt this much love since I was a kid from my nanny, who was a big black woman. Mm. She literally, this is, he said, my heart is bursting in love right now. Like, I and how'd you feel good. about that? He said, not even from my own mother. I didn't know how to take now, that. Now that's a compliment. It's a compliment, but is it? But is it a compliment? It's a weird one because it's a compliment, but it's also, it borders in a fetish territory. The fetishization yeah. of, of, yeah, it's, 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 it's difficult. Um, I try not to let too much offend me too because I don't have the brain compatibility to focus on what pisses everybody off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like I just feel like there's bigger shit though. Where I, I raise my eyebrow at a lot of stuff. Yeah. You know, but I won't. I won't be like, oh man, this is sick. I, you know, you like big black women. All right, that's your shit. I, I hit them back. I like big black dick. Yeah. Well, that. Well, I, mean, like- I mean. I mean. I <laughs> mean. Who doesn't? You know, I hit him. I hit him. I hit him back with something. But like, I'll be honest, Dante. Not a fan. Not no, a fan. I, don't I, don't I don't like big black dicks. Consider yourself a minority. Out. All right, I'm just not out there for it. Seriously, <laughs> consider yourself a minority. Um, th- what's interesting is I think um, put my thoughts together. So it, it's a funny thing how like I'm so deep in the in the history of it uh, you know that kind of interracial thing and but I, here's something that i i found out you know how and you know especially if you do a black room and somebody does a joke and people get up and they run out like it's so funny somebody's killing it, they get up and they run away yeah do you know where that comes from no where does that come from so when slave go you're gonna you're gonna bug out because this, this is how 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 embedded slavery is to black folks at a time when you had slaves and they would be, you know, in a social situation playing the violin or entertaining white white folks and stuff, if you wanted to laugh at something, they would have a barrel. You would have to stick your head in the barrel to laugh in the barrel because they didn't want to hear you laugh as you a black dead in the you, laughs. You're 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 you were so inhuman. How dare you laugh? So black black slaves would stick their head in the barrel so the the fact that they run away is to not show the master the joy that they have you're not allowed to show joy and and so they would keep a barrel so you stuck your head in the barrel and you laughed in the barrels so they couldn't hear you this is the craziest shit i ever heard Wow. And this, this this is why I've gotten to the point where it, it's I'm so Adam and like shut the fuck up just I don't want to hear your opinion about cancel culture or this i can't say this i can't i can't do that shut the fuck up i don't want to hear what the fuck you gotta say you don't know what the fuck you're talking about you have no idea of the historical reference of all of this um i just learned about chicken and watermelon too from back in the day you well, know how there's a negative yeah uh, yeah you know kind of negative towards, connotation yeah. taken, yes towards chicken and watermelon like oh yeah. ghetto black da 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 well, watermelon was uh we grew watermelon as one of the things we profited yes, off of. It was a profit, something we profited freedom. off of. Like yeah. once we reached freedom, it was one of the things like, okay, well, yeah, we, 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 we gotta figure out some shit. We gotta find yeah. something to sell and we, we, we actually we grew watermelon and it was beautiful and it tasted good and it was joyful. And white folks bought it. And they yep, and they so, bit it and they so they looked at you like you was no the niggas with the melons, you know what I mean? And yeah. it became a ah. And the fried chicken thing, um, that's how we preserve the white meat inside because they traveled. So they it was just a way to keep the meat fresh. They mm-hmm. I don't know who decided to say eat the skin, but they was a brilliant motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but like that that whole thing, just learning those little things and how Yeah, it makes you really kind of wonder what where the attraction, the white man attraction comes from. Um, it's also there's you know, like you said, the man gonna have me looking at these white boys at my show later. Like oh, you this. should. You should. <laughs> I believe you should. <laughs> I be, I absolutely believe you should. Now, I mean, should that dissuade her from from partaking? I'm gonna make sure. That. I'm gonna make sure Tata don't give nobody no white boy oh, no pussy Jesus. when I'm done. No, you can't. I, I haven't done it yet. I, I mean, I flirt back and stuff like that. Um, I haven't. Uh, I went on one date, but I haven't. Uh, gave. I haven't. How was the date? Way in yet? How was the date? 
Um, the day I, I probably was more awkward than them because I kept bringing up the fact I kept bringing up race because I I didn't know how to act in that situation. Like I'm around white people for business or just like friends and chilling, but not on a romantic level. I've never done that before. So, um, or like it's, it's uncomfortable because so at one here. point you're going to end up giving the dick a handshake, like a proper business handshake. <laughs> you're not going to know what to feel. do. So yeah. Like, you know, like, Oh, what the fuck? I mean, I like you. You're, I, I think you're really pretty. Da, da, da. He's trying to agree with everything that I'm saying. I say, yeah. So when you ever, you like, so you like black women for real, for real. And all that. I'm talking like that. <laughs> mm. Yeah. You know, you I'm double down. Figure out why you... he here. Like, nigga, why are you here? Like, what's really going on? Mm. I was more so on that type of time. Mm. So, yeah. what is your dating history like, Tata? My dating history is black, Hispanic. Um, uh, I, I had one biracial person, mm. but he identified which, more with the black side, which is black. <laughs> right. <laughs> there's, yeah. There's no such thing as biracial. Mm-hmm. You like pick a pick a color and shut up. Yeah, black and Hispanic. Uh, yeah. probably what I've been with. I, but I, I, I was open to to dating outside my race further. Let me ask you this: so. Do you? So there's this whole thing, you know, the whole Kevin Samuels thing about women, black women being overweight, and and mm-hmm. and that. How do you? How does that? How does that? Um, impact you, or how? Did, what's your feeling on that? I, I, it's so hard when you've been overweight your whole life. I was a fat kid, so yeah, I've been hearing this shit. I'm, I'm 32, so I'm I'm over here like. All right, you know, <laughs> like right, right. Somebody I, like it. <laughs> some, yeah, I have reached that somebody like it point. Um, only time like I'm back in the gym now, but that's because my knees and my hips ain't as lubricant as they used to be, and I want to be able to still, you know, bounce on it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm in the gym for different reasons, and see, you know, Tata, Tata knows how to get those followers. Mm. <laughs> she wants <laughs> how to bounce. Gym. That's all she has to say. Is I bounce on it, and that that was, hashtag bounce on it. Hashtag bounce on. That's the Tata trying to strengthen her knees, <laughs> letting people know I'm trying to get these knees strong. Why are you strong? trying to lose weight, girl? No, I'm just trying to fuck you right. So yeah, um, and it's real thing. Run up the steps and not be tired, you yeah, know. And then yeah. and on top of that, you know, all that the health stuff and everything. But um, yeah, that outside of that, uh, I have my days where I'm looking at my gut and I'm like, oh man. But for the most part, it, I don't have too many of those days. Yeah. I think it's natural when people have a day where they feeling like, oh shit, I can get it together, you yeah. know. But Did, I try not to let those days go. Any on long term relationships? Have you been in any long term relationships? My longest uh, relationship was three years, and that was like a live in. We mm. were together. We lived together. I had a bunch of situationships. Mm-hmm. It's hard to date as a comedian too. Um, in my city, I'm I'm really popular here. Um, I got the whole internet thing going on. And I, I'm I'm booked every week on a bunch of shows all over. So a lot of guys uh, You don't have no time. Yeah, time. Uh my schedule, me getting off late, coming in late. Um, I hang out with dudes. The, the, I, I hang out with the dudes want me around too. Like and not like I'm 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 a cool chick. I'm the cool chick you can kick it with. Yeah. I, and I, and I'm not a girl that censors men too much, you know, because mm-hmm. on some real shit, I don't censor anybody because unless they saying something off the wall, um I I don't want to be censored, right? I, and if you do say some off the wall shit, I, I though you better be quiet when I say my shit. That's how I right. move, you mm-hmm. know. So the dudes don't mind me being around because I'm not a girl that's gonna be like me too, real quick. Like I'm just not one of them. Um, now, do you think you have these guys who are your friends who don't mind you around? They still want to fuck you, or do you think it's? I, I they definitely still want to fuck me, uh-huh. but they don't they don't they don't overstep or or, or disrespect me. But I mean, you can see, you can smell it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can smell when a motherfucker want to chew you up. You think you think that women could be friends with men? Uh, yes, without fucking, yeah. As long as nobody cross them boundaries, absolutely. Right, but I mean, is that the fact that you have to you have to watch whether they cross those boundaries? It's almost <laughs> like it's almost like saying I don't think they could be friends. I mean, yeah, they they'll settle for friendship. Mm-hmm. Um, with with laying in the bushes for one day for you to come, oh, he he left me, and I, I'm gonna come in. Let me uh, 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 let me let me help you out. Then you know, I mean, do you feel that as well, or are you you're not naive to the fact? Because the simple fact that you yeah. said that they yeah. So are they really your friends when really deep down they want to fuck you anyway, or did the? Or... I think they get to know me and really enjoy me. Like like initially is definitely there and still want to fuck. And still yeah, they still that's still there, but it, it's not as as heavy as it was in the beginning. Because they're like, "Yo, now nah, this chick is really cool," 
and I also have male friends who are who have ladies already married or or, yeah, that or don't have matter. girlfriends and all. Yeah, that don't matter. <laughs> and they definitely don't cross the line. So it's just like you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I am the cool chick. I grew, but I, Dante, I grew up in a house full of boys. How many boys? How many? What was the family life like? My dad has twenty children, most of them boys. Uh, wow. about nine baby moms. He was Jamaican. He was a kingpin. No, oh, wow. I had a different life in the nineties. I had gold jewelry, fur coats, Jordans, and then I watched it get snatched by the fit like, like mm. that. He went, you know, and my whole life turned at, in middle school. It turned around, but um, in the household, because my household changed as my family dynamics changed. Uh, when mm. I say boys, my aunt had two sons, and a lot of my cousins and brothers always came over. Or right. people would live with her for a year or two. She always her house was the house. That if you need to get your shit together, you come live there. Or if somebody can't raise their kid, they come, they go live there. Like mm-hmm. her house. So it was always, I was always around a lot of boys. I got to see how they move, how they talk. They talk, men talk filthy. So that's part of the reason I probably talk filthy. Like I, mm. you know, it has a lot to I'm I'm starting to pick apart. Cause I'm like, why does my content be so sexual sometimes? I, I I'm starting to pick apart different things. I'm like, do I need therapy? Like <laughs> Like, oh I yeah, well you I, definitely I know you. You need therapy. You, yeah, <laughs> I do need therapy. But like I look at my childhood and how I was introduced to porn. Your dad had 20 age. kids. You need therapy. Like yes. that's the first. And I was introduced to a porn at a young age. We would sneak and watch the tapes. There was when my aunt had a box of tapes mm. in the house and we would be like and we'll go and all the kids would be watching it. Like I was introduced to some things at, a, at a, too young. Um yeah. I seen things too young. I seen guns, drugs, violence. I've I seen a lot at an extremely young age, and I still went to school and got straight A's and B's. Yeah, you were you close it. with your dad or no? I was. I was very close to my dad. Um, and it's odd because my dad was a uh, he was a, he was a uh, he wasn't the greatest towards other people, but he treated me like a little queen, a little princess. Mm. You know, was he good to we all the kids? Afraid of him. All your brothers and sisters, same same type of energy, or did you? Uh, I had a bit of a different energy um, with him. I was with him the most, I'll say, out of everybody. But he loved all of his children. He picked all of us up and everything. But I was, uh, I, I'll say, I was a little special to him, and everybody did know that. But we we, we didn't try to say that, right, right, all the time. But it was like kind of like, oh yeah, that's everybody. Weird. Everybody's got their favorite. And did, it's weird. And... I think it takes play, it plays a part in how I dated later. In what way? I would pick up men who uh, I, w- I would I would date men who had baby moms or multiple children um, or just kind of in the street life a little bit. Like it would just like your dad. It seemed, you mean. It seemed normal. Yeah. To me. Yeah. Um, it wasn't was, off limits. It wasn't something yeah. peculiar for you. Right. But now now. No, I'm I'm not. Uh, I'm switching up. Are you going to therapy or you just made that decision <laughs> on yourself? No, I haven't. This is all self-reflection, but I do need yeah. I do I do think I need to go. Do you 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 said you have a son, right? No, I don't have no any children. You, you have no kids. Okay. Nope. So um do you think that you sh- like so when you have these kind of ideas, like, like for instance, the first time as a as a as a child, you how do you know what a you know you, the way you know what a man is is the depiction of what your father is like. If you think about it, your father is the the epitome of what manhood is, right? right? And so what you find this all of the time all the time is whatever the daddy was is what they what you go, okay, this is what a man is. Right? And I understand that. And I, same way when you look at what a mother is, is your mother mm-hmm. is what what womanhood is. So, um you know, when you say he's he was a kingpin and and you know moving weight and and making this kind of it that feels normal. So it's it kind of becomes what you're attracted to, right? Um, ha, but who you are is usually either what your mother was or everything that your mother wasn't. Do you know what I mean? Can do you, can you speak to that a little bit? How that? Yes. And um, it's funny you say that. My mom's dream prior to her addiction was to become a comedic actress. My mom is funny. Yeah. She's still funny to this day. She on that shit still. I run into her. She yeah. looks different. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um she smoke crack. hmm Still. Yeah. Is crack still heavy in, in, in Philly? Uh no. Uh no. I don't the pills. She's over in Camden, right over the bridge, which is still the Philly area. 
But right. um, yeah, she's uh, I, I don't think she smokes as much crack as she did when she first started. Mm-hmm. But she, her life is such a took twenty years. Her life is she don't know herself anymore. Yeah, she's a completely different person. She uh, lost her children, lost me and my sister, um, and she started at twenty seven. Mm-hmm. I started comedy at twenty seven, and she started smoking crack at twenty seven. I was a little girl, um, and I, uh, the shit just spiraled out of control for her. Did and your did your dad move crack or did he move blow or what, he was what? moving weed in the nineties, believe it or not. Weed and right. guns, I think, was his thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Did he ever do crack? He ever did he ever start he moving? Did not. He, he was no. an occasional beer drinker from time to time. No, but did he did he sell crack or no? Because the nineties nope. big crack. No, never never just nope. was a big he weed was a, dealer. He was big weed and they Jamaican, so everybody knew the Jamaicans had the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So they were like, you know, heavy. Not that I'm aware of. I, I have not heard of him pushing crack. If, he probably dibbled and dabbled in that, selling that a bit. But I know primarily it was weed. Like yeah. pounds, 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 pounds. Yeah, well, you. I mean, back in the 90s, you could, you know, you could be a weed kingpin. I mean, it sounds so crazy now. Yeah, now. Because it's I so fluid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it's funny because my, my grandfather, you know, my grandma. So my dad was born 1920, right? Mm-hmm. So I have an aunt, I have an aunt that was born in the 1800s, 1898, 96, something like that. But my grandfather was born before that. And he used to, um, bootlegger, he, used yeah, to he was a bootlegger. Like he would wow. go to, he would take, you know, how you see black men on the, on the porters in the mm-hmm. black. So my, my grandmother had, had this, she had this overcoat and she would put, she sewed 16 pockets so they would, you know, like Canadian club, whatever yeah. he would get and put it in the overcoat. And that's how, because he had 16, we had a, I had 16 uncles, eight boys, eight girls. Wow. And that's okay. how he, that's how they survived was him bootlegging. But if you, you know, you can't imagine somebody smuggling in alcohol, like, especially when you, you could just go to the corner store and get it now, you know, but I remember weed being a, a certain thing. Is there, what kind of personality, what kind of person was he? I mean, it, you know, as far as you. Well, we used to celebrate our birthday together. So he's a Capricorn like me. He's very, um, about his money. Uh, you didn't, he didn't uh, mess around. He was the, he, he believed in taking care of everybody. So he, he, my dad has done probably some crazy things and people have different stories about him. Um, but what I saw was he fed the family, you know, he mm. sent barrels to, uh, to Jamaica. He always sent money and barrels. Um, and he was the first person here. And now a large part of the amount of my Jamaican family members are here. Now so, did he move them here? Or, uh... Yep. He moved my aunt here who ended up raising me once my mom got on drugs. Mm-hmm. Um, I was lived with my aunt for oh, 10 plus years when my mom got on a crack. Um, so, and he's the reason she was here, you know, like, uh, right. he moved his sisters here, his mm-hmm. nephews, he was doing it like one by one and then yeah. told them what to do to get other people. Like he started it, you know, he right. did start it, uh, like, yeah, come here, make money, live life. Let's do this. He set everybody up. Like he was, he was that guy, you know, we had block parties. The nineties was lit. It was mm-hmm. so lit. Telling me. <laughs> we would let the ice cream truck pull up. Everybody getting ice cream. Like it was just like a good time. There were some bad times, but it, I remember these good times as well. Did so? Is that how does that uh? How does that affect the way that you look at men now? I mean, I mean, it is you know, because when you have a good, we have a great daddy. A lot of times it fucks up women for the rest of their life because you mm-hmm. you quick to oh you clown, you know. Yeah, I'll say uh, now I have to learn a lot on my own. Uh, what do you mean? The men. Uh, I, I mean, I look at, I, I step outside of, okay, I was his daughter. Yeah, he treated me like a princess. I, I got to step outside of that mm-hmm. and look at who he was as a man. Mm-hmm. You know, he also was uh, violent towards women, including my mother. And mm-hmm. he did that in front of me. I ran and hide, hid in the closet. Mm-hmm. My sister, who's a more aggressive than me, she bit his ankles. Right. And she was trying to fight him. And she's younger than me. She was three biting on. Yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. I was in the closet. Right. I, and then my mom uh, treated me weird uh, after that because and I was a little girl because I still would love him and go with him and hug him after he beat her ass. Right. Right. But I, I, I'm seven. I, I, I don't fucking know. You know? Yeah. 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 I get you. You know, so um, that created a weird 
she all she you know that created a weird energy between me and my mom even as a little girl you yeah. know so um and she t she was closest to my sister who's younger than me it's interesting because you she created the whole dynamic of the thing she had the kids she picked him she mm -hmm. put i mean so nobody you know, very rarely is somebody abusive. You know, before y'all were born, he was abusive. Before, it's not like you you don't start that out, especially, you know, old West Indian one. They don't put up with shit. Super strong, masculine kind of energy, which is the way it is. But That's what it was, yep. You can't pick that. You can't set that up and then, then be surprised because, you know, because a motherfucker's violent when that's mm -hmm. that's what you pick. Um, have you ever been in, a, in an abusive situation? Uh, I've been in an abusive situation, but not an abusive relationship. What like do you I, mean? I just, uh, I, I just had a fight with a guy, but he had the wrong one. I was fighting back. Mm. Yeah, he fucked up. Somebody you know? was dating. <laughs> Somebody else was dating. Right. <laughs> we had one encounter. He put his hands on me, and I, I was whooping ass back. Yeah, he, he was like, oh. Now, was your mom type of chick with, with, with fight back or no? After a while, she did. Yeah. After a while, she did like on that, like on that Ike and Tina in that limo type time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh fuck, I'm I'm done with this shit. You know. Tata, what is the uh, goofiest thing you ever did for love? Goofiest thing I ever did for love? Yeah. I, I uh I bailed a man out of jail. You bailed a man out of jail? Wow. Okay. How much? How much? Uh, his bail ended up being like like eight grand, but I gathered the family, and I put a couple dollars towards it. But I put when I say bailed him out, my name is on it. Oh wow! So and he's still fighting the case. So you know, if he doesn't go to court, you know, you lose the eight grand or whatever portion. Whatever happens with the social security numbers that's attached to that shit is me. So how long ago was this? His sister. This is probably like two years ago. And you still you're not dating him now? No, I mean like from time to time we'll talk. I, I try to keep communication open because my name is on it, like uh -huh. it fell. <laughs> right. You know, but we're not together. He's trying to get his life together. You know, he's fighting his case. So, you know. You sound like if you if the opportunity came that you would give it another shot. Uh, he was a chronic cheater, so I, it would be really hard for us to get past. Uh, I would. It would be hard to trust him. You know, like he's a very sweet man, super sweet. Um, I, I love how he catered to me. You know, he even got my little kit together before i would go to shows here's this mm -hmm. that you need the, you know oh, like, so this you, recent this like you, how long have you been doing comedy now uh six years i mean i'm in year six okay all right so he was oh that's weird i it's, started dating him probably like year three mm -hmm. and we uh we really broke things off uh over a year ago so let me ask you this if when you talk about you know you grew up with your dad bunch of baby mamas how many different baby mamas it was probably like nine of them, nine. And I grew About up nine. going to their houses and stuff like that. I was yeah. in a situation, too, where he had multiple baby moms, and we were all at Thanksgiving together. Really? And, yeah. And at whose house? It was his mom's house. The baby moms, he had two baby moms, and they were there for Thanksgiving. And I was telling, I remember talking to friends about this, and they was like, you was at the house with the baby moms? And I was like, yeah. Like they was like, wait, you was at the house with the baby, my both. Of them. I was like, yeah. I was like, yo, I grew up like that. My dad had all his baby moms up in the house at my aunt house, and everybody better act right too. They ain't mm. like each other like that, but they, you know, they was they was, was like this, but <laughs> <laughs> but everybody knew to you know chill out in this household. Yeah, like, no one wants to end up with one of those so sandals on the on side of their head Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I grew up running around the house with my brothers and sisters, and seeing his mom, and they're like, "Hi," you know, seeing their mom, like, you know. So when I was put in that situation, I was chilling. Any of the moms cool with you? One of them. Yeah. The one we didn't get along, um, because I had caught her in the shower with him. At one point, that's a whole story. But uh, <laughs> the kids let me in because they knew me. They're like, "What's uh, here?" I was like, "Where are your mom? Yeah, upstairs with my daddy." Oh. And I. <laughs> oh, you didn't know it was the uh, you didn't know that he was he was dating her. Or? No, he was he, uh, me and him got in an argument and he went to go fuck his baby mom. Wow. But they probably that's something that they I, I later on learned that that's just something that they do because that's mm -hmm. what his other baby mom had to deal with. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like that when I heard when all this I was like, oh yeah, nah, this is too ghetto for me. I was like, <laughs> that's when it hit me, like yeah, nah, you're better than this. Man, I'm I'm I don't tired. Care how just... you grew up. 
I'm just tired of listening to that. So there's a lot going on. That's a lot to balance, man. I'm this educated black woman. With this, yeah, with this, this with no skunk. children. I have a great resume. As you gotta, you gotta get some. You gotta go to therapy, Tata. But Tata's problem is then she looks over at the white side. She goes, "Nah, I'll stay here. I'll stay here." <laughs> no, I know, I know it's wild. I know it's wild over I'm here, but it's the wild that I know. Forget I it. I might run into a little bit of racism and feel like yeah. a me from time to time. Yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna have to deal with no baby mom. Yeah. See, yeah. man, it's crazy yeah. out here. But nah, um. Uh, I was in that sense. I, one one of the baby moms uh, is really cool. She comes to shows. She buy merch. Mm. Shows love, and she allows me to see her daughter, who I had developed a relationship with mm. uh, in that situation. And the dad, I don't date him anymore at all. He's with mm. an Asian now, uh, so he doesn't mind that I have a relationship with his daughter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I get a little custom made Tata Sheree shirt. But, you know, she's she's yeah. cool. She comes to shows and shit. Yeah, yo, that's yeah. crazy as shit, Tata. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was in there making jokes though. I was at the. I was like, I, I ain't gonna hold you. I, I be saying stuff when I'm not supposed to say stuff. The baby mom's in here. I was like, oh, you got all three of us in here, huh? I was in there talking like that at the house. They like, yo, this bitch is crazy. Now, did you talk about this stuff on stage? I need to talk about it more. I do. I'm gonna tell you something. The the um, it would just from listening to you, something I think would be interesting. You know how you say you. You nigger it up mm -hmm. when you do the black rooms. Instead of yeah. instead of blacking it up with the rooms, tell your story. Okay. Which goes that's blacker than any slang that you could. You know what I'm saying? It's like this is a this is the uh, the black African American icon. You know what I mean? This is this is what they don't understand, and by telling that makes them look at uh, you know makes them look at you oh you're, you're authentic or oh, this is really authentic right you know what i mean still do that while talking as proper as i proper as i talk yeah do it with that it's voice really, it's still my story yeah and, and just say i know i sound like this. I sound like this i sound like this but here's my story and and when they hear the story i mean you know just for me there's a lot of this what i find is a you know just for me even you know because i'm pretty articulate as well i don't bend it because I don't want to have to bend it. You know what I mean? Like, right. did you hear, did you hear, uh, did you see, um, you know what, let's talk about this behind the Patreon. Um, Because we're going to do, plug your stuff. A bonus show on the Patreon. In? What do you got? What's social media and what you got going on? What's up, y'all? I have, uh, all everything is uh, online. Even if you Google me, everything will come up. Uh, TataSharice.com. That is T-A-T-A, -T -A, She Rise. TataSharice.com uh, on all social media platforms and my website. Um, I do just have a, a few shows coming up um, and I will be in New York really soon. So just stay tapped in with me and you'll be able to catch me out there as well. Okay. Harry Tor. All my social media is at Harry Turjanian and uh, follow my YouTube, the TikTok, and join us over at uh, Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash manschool202, where we're about to do the bonus coverage. And also, if you need relationship consultations, you can hit me up at advicefromharry at gmail.com. That's the email to set it up. Uh, you know what to do. Google me, motherfuckers. Also, follow me on the uh, Dante Nero. Everything's Dante Nero. Con uh, you want a consultation, hit me at the uh, uh, DanteNero.com. Click on consult. Uh, I've been putting up more content up on my YouTube page, so check that out. Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? Sexual revolutions being podcast. Check us on the other side, the Patreon. We're going to get a little deeper in with, with Tata on, on the Patreon side. Love y'all. We out.